All right, hi guys. We are looking at uh, the next part in our parallel and perpendicular lines with transversals unit uh, section. Uh, so we're now going to start taking these per these parallel lines and going to start putting them on a graph. But before we can do that, we need to review a little bit about um, how do we graph equations of lines, slope, rise over run, all of those different things that you got in Algebra 1. So we're going to spend uh, just a little bit of time reviewing some of those topics because we're going to need them for our parallel lines. So today we're just looking at how do you find uh, the slope when you're given an equation. So we have the slope intercept form here. Uh, remember slope is our M, the intercept stands for the Y intercept or B. So when we have our equation, our M, whatever the coefficient of the X is, that's what we use for the slope while your B, which is the constant, this is our y-intercept, and this could be seen a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's expressed just as a single B, or sometimes you might see it as a coordinate, zero comma B. So if we go down to the example that's down there below, again, the M is the coefficient of X, so in this case, that is my negative one half. And because this is negative, that means your graph, when we actually plot and use this slope, that means you will be going down because it's negative. And then the denominator of our fraction going to the right. And then we have your y-intercept because it is a plus two, our B value is a two and as a coordinate, zero comma two. So again, that's when we're looking for that information out of the equation. So let's go straight down and check out how do we pull this information out of a table? So again, our slope is what we wanna find first, which is the triangle Y over triangle X or delta Y over delta X. Another way to see this is the change in y divided by the change in x. So there's lots of different ways you can see the, the slope when you're looking at a table. So let's use that and see what is the change in y, meaning what are your y's changing by? So I'm going to add actually an extra column here for change in y and change in x. So my Y values, it only takes one pair. I don't necessarily have to go all the way down and check all of them. I just need one set. So from three to two, we went down. So that's a minus one. From negative two to zero, we went up. So plus two. So then my changes in Y is a negative one. My changes in X is a positive two meaning my slope, sorry, I'm gonna move this over here for just a little bit, is a negative one half. And there's my slope. Then to look for the B, this is where we're gonna want the coordinate, zero comma B, because we look for zero in the X, which means I have zero comma two, so my B is just a two, okay? Just the two in the Y column can be made up of my B. Now we can look at rise over run. So again, rise is your up or down. And if we move up, that's a positive, down being a negative. Run is my left and right. So again, if I move to the right, that is a positive, to the left, a negative. Now, the easiest way to start these off actually is to find that y-intercept. And that is where you cross the y-axis. So again, my y is the up and down, my x is side to side. So I cross the y-axis at zero, two. 
So zero comma two. So my B is just the two. I'm gonna use that y-intercept and find my slope. Now, one of the easiest ways to find this slope, start at the y-intercept and move along your line until you hit exactly at the intersection of crossroads. So this second point here. So to get from the y-intercept to the second dot, we went down one, So here's my M. And then I had to go to the right, two. And again, based off rise over run. If we go down, that is negative. If we go to the right, that is positive. So my slope again, a negative one half. Now our last box that we have is your formula where we have X1, Y1, X2, and Y2. And we have used these values before when we looked at your distance formula. So remember each of these sets of points is an x, y, but the little ones go together and the twos go together that just represent point one and point two. So now we just put your numbers in the right positions. So y2 goes first, which is a negative one. And here to make this a little easier on the eyes, I'm gonna change color here. So X2 and Y2. So I want Y2 and X2 first for both of these fractions. All right, so Y2 and X2 first. So negative one and six. We subtract from that x1 and y1, so y1 on top, 4 and negative 4. And now we just need to see what do these equal. Negative 1 minus 4, a negative 5. 6 minus negative 4 becomes a same as a plus, so 10. So I have a negative 5 over 10 for a negative 1 half. And there is my slope. So guys, I hope you liked learning a little bit about the different ways you can find slope and y-intercept. The focus is about slope, which is why I did not do the y-intercept for this one, because if I just have these two points right now, I'm not going to worry about finding that y-intercept because again, just focusing on your ways to find slope. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions at all, and I hope you have a great